to the channel and thank you for tuning in to another video. Today, our custom tune version two is complete. We actually had to lower the boost. We went from 19.2 pounds boost to 18.2 pounds boost because I wanted to clean up my timing. On the previous tune, I did, ran some data logging and the timing was all over the place. Didn't look too good. High pressure fuel pump was on the verge of maxing out. So on this tune, we are pushing the limits of the high pressure fuel pump, but in the safe range, according to Kerry Jordan. So let's see how these logs look. So we're gonna do uh, three pulls like we did before, and we're gonna go home and take a look at the data logs. Hopefully they look good. I would hate to have to resort back to an OTS map or contact Kerry Jordan once again and bother him and say, hey, do we need to do this process all over again? Hopefully it's just where it should be and the car is stoked. We initially did an E30 tune, but we're going E35 to just help with uh, our timing a bit and clean that up. So, went from E30 to E35. Let's see how these data logs do. We have our boot mode app open, auto log features on. I love that feature. We have our traction control off. All right, here we go. First pull on the new tune. See how she feels. Make sure there's no cars. All right, 2,000 RPMs, and let's floor it. The stock turbo runs out of steam around the 21 PSI mark. We're at 18.2 as target, but we're hitting 19.2. So I don't know how much more power I'm gonna get out of this stock turbo. So I think the play here is Dwarf Stage 2 high pressure fuel pump, fully 85 on a pure Stage 2 turbo. Now that's gonna cost upwards of, let's see, this the high pressure fuel pump's $1,800. The turbo is around 2500 plus install, plus another custom tune. So three, we're talking probably six or seven grand for that. And that's, I would say conservatively, just because things always go wrong when you're putting car parts on your, on your car. So I'm sure there will be some other expenses that I'm not thinking about. I already upgraded the clutch, so it's ready for more power. Um, but that's what I'm thinking. So I either, enjoy the car as it sits, which I do. I enjoy the car. I think it's a fantastic daily driver. Um, but I am thinking about that right now. M240i, I like those cars a lot, but too narrow of a wheelbase for me. I want to run fatter tires and there's not a lot of selections as far as wheels go. The car feels really good though. Such a night and day difference between when I first got the car and now, to be honest, I was a bit underwhelmed when I first test drove this car. I didn't have, it was bone stock other than an intake and a muffler delete. And I was coming from a 3,200 pound 135i that was stage two full bolt on with E30 tune. And when I test drove this thing, it just felt like a boat and did not feel fast at all. But this N55 is a, is a robust engine. I'm, quite pleasantly surprised. All right, let's go for run number two. All right, and let's go. All right, that one didn't feel, I was actually, it's really windy and I was into the wind on that one. That one uh, didn't feel as powerful. And my car was kind of moving, it was kind of sketchy. All right, third and final pull. That pull felt pretty good. Let's go home and take a look at the data logs and cross the fingers, hopefully everything looks good and we can move on with our lives. 
All right, moment of truth. Let's check out these data logs and see how they look. First poll we did, that one felt really good. Really strong. First thing I look for, this pink line right here, that's our knock detected line. We don't see any, any knock detected in this poll, which makes me happy. Go to the beginning of the poll. And we're gonna look at timing, our boost, target boost, high parish fuel pump. Timing looks really good. It's usually it's usually pretty good in the beginning of my pulls, and it only gets erratic towards the upper RPM range. And so let's see, right here we hit 20.3 psi and target is 18.2, so slight overboost here. And it begins to drop in the 4400 RPM mark. And that is right where my high pressure fuel pump was getting maxed out before. It was actually in, so target is 2254 PSI. And we are at, we dropped down to 1571 is a low point. Before on my first custom tune, it was in the 14, low 1400s and dropped even into the upper 1390 PSI range. So definitely has improved timing looks good up in the upper rpm range which is good so right here we want to stay within three degrees of each cylinder as far as our timing goes so as you can see cylinder six 10.5 degrees of timing being pulled and cylinder two three and four and five is at 13.5. So we're within the, the safe range of three, de three degrees of uh, variance in between each cylinder. So that's good news. So I got the second one. No knock detected in this pole either. Let's see how timing looks on this pole. Very consistent so far with all six cylinders. Let's see if we overboost a little right here again. Yep, 20.234. Okay. High pressure fuel pump improves on this pole. Doesn't drop below 1640. Or yeah, 1641 is a low point of the high pressure fuel pump. So improved on this pole. That's good news. Timing looks impeccable. And let's see here. Let's go towards red line. Yeah, towards red line, it's, you know, timing gets a little inconsistent. But again, we're staying within the three degrees of one another. So let's see. Yeah. 11 and 14. Okay. That's good. Let's take a look at the last log. Ooh, all right, we have two knock detecteds. Okay, so here's the deal with knock. From what I've been told from Carrie Jordan is that knock is going to happen from time to time. If it's consistent on each pull and happens in the same RPM range as one another, then we might have an issue or a bad batch of gas. So the first thing I do when I get when knock is detected is I look at my timing. So Timing is still within the safe range. So cylinder four is at 10 degrees and cylinder two and three is at 13 difference of three. So we're in that safe range. Our second knock detection, 19.7 and 12.7. So th they're within three degrees of one another. I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but I am gonna keep an eye on it. Again, I fill up with shell gas always. I have experimented with Chevron, but my timing was actually worse on Chevron. I have a 76 gas station near me with E85, so maybe I'll try 76. Um, it's more convenient. It's only a mile from my house. The other, the Shell station is about five, six miles. So I will do a little experimenting with 76 gas and Shell. Let's check out the timing. Looks really good throughout the poll. This is where we slide. So we're not over boosting as much in the mid RPM range. And it tapers down rather quickly. Now let's take a look at our high pressure fuel pump right around 4,400 RPMs and it has improved significantly. So we don't drop below 1800. That's really good. 
like I said before, my first revision, I was in the 1300s. So this is definitely looks really good. This log would be pretty flawless if my, if these two knock detected, if these two knock events. All right, I get this question a lot. Would I just, if I had to do it all over again, would I just run the stage two OTS E30 map or would I do a custom tune? The custom tune is $600. I enjoyed the entire process of that. I learned a lot. Kerry kind of taught me all the different parameters and yeah, I asked a ton of questions. I probably uh, bugged him a little bit too much, but hey, I'm learning this platform and I feel like now I can look at a log and understand the different parameters and what they mean and help other people out that are kind of in the same boat when they when I first started. So I think the whole process is worth doing if you want a little bit extra power. So we're talking one to one and a half PSI more than the OTS map. I think it's definitely worth it. But if I were to do it all over again, I would probably just run the OTS E30 map, call it a day, and then do the upgraded stage two Dorch high pressure fuel pump and upgrade the turbo. And that will be a huge jump as far as power and just run fully 85. So I'm kind of in the middle of deciding if I wanna go that route or just jump into a different platform. But for now, I think the car is sits perfectly. It feels really good. It's a fantastic daily driver. So hopefully you gain some knowledge out of this and hopefully it helps you decide if you wanted to run a uh, OTS map or a custom tune. So if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram. I appreciate you guys tuning into my channel. Please like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.